What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got an updated version of the Tackle Box Buyer's Guide. This is like one of our best viewed videos of all time, so I'm excited to update it because a lot of things have changed for burly fishing and for also tackle boxes since then. Oh yeah. Uh, so if you guys saw the old video, it'll be linked somewhere up here. You can go back and check it out. But it was a lot of the older boxes, not all the new stuff that I've got uh, or that are on the market really. And I think I had my brick backdrop in the background. <laughs> so, RIP to the and, old office setup. And I shot on like a GoPro Hero 7. So now we're on the good camera. Now we can get up close and personal, okay. better picture quality. All of it should be better. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like videos like this, reviews, unboxings, fishing videos, we do it all here on the channel. So consider subscribing. Smash the like on this video. Ring that notification <laughs> bell so you can see when we post more content. And then join me and him every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. This is my buddy Paul. So. We talk to awesome people in the fishing industry and we do a giveaway on our lives. So come join us for one of them. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's talk about tackle boxes. You love them, you need them. You, you do need them. <laughs> I mean, if you have more than a piece of tackle, yeah. you probably have a tackle box. Uh, so we have a, a plethora of tackle boxes here behind us that we're gonna be going through here today from a number of different brands. We'll talk uh, pricing options, we'll talk value with them, and then we'll give you guys our opinion on those boxes, having used them. We've both used most of these. Uh, these are all mine, but Paul has like a lot of the very similar. Got it, very got same. it, got it, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Exactly. <laughs> so we do have our own opinions on these. We'll let you guys know how we feel about them. Mm -hmm. You can let us know how you feel about them in the comments below. We appreciate that. This is a community, so we do want to talk together about it. To keep this simple, we'll kind of go brand by brand. We'll start with the Planos, probably the ones that you guys are the most familiar with, one of the biggest names on the market when it comes to tackle management on the systems. planet? First off, we're going to start with the cheaper versions, right? So these are very inexpensive tackle trays that you might find at just about any store. Um, here in the Midwest, we live in Michigan. We go to a little place called Myers, Myers or Walmart. You know, you can go there. You guys have like a Shields, Bass Pro, Cabela's, Gander, Gander whatever. You get it. Go there, you grab these. These are like five bucks, you know, six ninety nine tops. Sub 10. You know, you've got two latch system, just two little latches there pops open, and then you can put your inserts. You guys are familiar with this. And you usually have to cut those inserts out, which is possibly my least favorite it's part. It's more than that though, because so they come strung together, right? So yep. there'll be the little inserts, there'll be like 10 of those all strung together. Right. And you can see Jeff didn't do a very great job of cutting okay. that one. <laughs> we can be critical, that's fine. No, but it's a great example that's though. Fine. So like I actually go through all of these with a pocket yep. knife and I trim them all up because otherwise they don't kind of fit in the way that they're supposed yep. to. There has to be one for every area where you could put one. So that's like, you know, 30 yeah. of those. But I mean, for something like this was uh, my old terminal setup, right? You see a bunch of jigs and stuff in here. Um, it worked well because this type of Plano has so many small compartments. See all the divider slots there? You, you could have, I don't know, 40 compartments in this thing. It's, it's ridiculous. So I think versatile. If you're looking to not spend a ton of money, great. But if you also notice, like you can see kind of how dirty it is on the inside here. And there's a bit of bit of rust formulating, right? So this is not like a, a rust proof, rust safe container. There's definitely some home fixes you guys could do with that, by the way. Uh, so if you wanna grab like those silica gel packets, you can throw those in here. Uh, you can do different little fixes like that. Maybe add some foam. Or just draw like everything out before you put it in. Dude, they're not, they're not good waterproof. Good luck doing that. They're, yeah, they're not waterproof either. Uh, they are so, not. Which is sort of something that people have come to expect mm -hmm. from a higher quality tackle box. Mm -hmm. I personally, I have like uh, six of these in my office, the yep. bigger size, and I use these to store things that I exchange all the time. So like as a, as a baseline, these are great. They have great. their purpose. I use them all the time. There's nothing wrong with taking these in a boat with you either. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'll call out is the latches are actually like they're pretty heavy duty. They're pretty actually heavy duty and they do their job really well. So mm -hmm. for a cheap option, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these. Yeah. Then we step up a little bit. So we got the Plano Elite. These ones are coming up a little bit more expensive, usually like 10 to 12 bucks. You've got bigger heavy duty latches. This, so the latches are definitely kind of the game with these, I feel. Uh, so these latches are much better. The Plano Elite also come in specialty 
uh, options. So here we have like more of a, a jerk bait, or in this case, it's just holding some random like swimming and frog baits. So all of these for me at this point are kind of like the extras bins, by the way. So don't mind what's inside of them. But uh, you got the longer tray containers here. So throw some jerk baits, maybe some small swim baits, stuff the other, like that. The other thing I want to call out is you can see how the edges are angled there and they're smooth. Yep. When you've got a bunch of tackle in there, it actually makes it really easy to put your finger in and scoop them out yep. um, because you got something for you to press your finger up against versus, you know, these ones, the only place where you have like a smooth rounded edge for you to use your fingers on the edges. Front and back. Um, so that's just another little designy deal yep. there. From there, we get a little more expensive and we step up to our first waterproof one to talk about for today. So this is again, a Plano. These are called the stowaways and they come in many different colors of this little waterproof tubing around the side. Uh, it's kind of irrelevant. This is the 3600 size. So these things are actually fairly inexpensive. These come in at like 999 up to about 12 bucks for the big boy version, the 3700, which I'll show you in a second. But right here, you've got more customizable trays. One thing I will call out that I don't like about these is that it's got this big side, which is immovable. Like this, this little wall right here, this grid, you can't change that. So these are not as customizable in my opinion, uh, versus the other ones we were just looking at. And it's got this, look at this tiny divider sections. <laughs> so you got like one big section, three tiny sections that I've literally never used. Uh, it's just not, it's not as versatile, I feel. It is waterproof and it has epic latches. Look at these things. Boom, bang, boom. These things are sturdy. It's super heavy duty. I use these, so I my Ned yeah. Box. These are like the common one we'd use. I use this one all the time. My Ned Box is in here. I think it makes a great chatterbait yeah. slash jig box yeah. um, if you don't mind them rattling around a little bit. So other than them moving yep. around, it's a great box. The, the other drawback too, to the 37 or and the 3600, the you get three latches, so that's three things for you to deal with. Versus you'll see some of the upgraded boxes you yeah. get later. It gets better. Yeah. So here we go, here's a 3700 size. So it's got like red, but I don't think it's always the same color. I think it either. is always red, is blue, and I think yellow, but I know red and blue are the ones that I've always yeah. got. So that's a different, that's how you can tell the difference quickly between a 37 and 36. And the 37, in my opinion, way better than the 36, not just because it's more space, but because it is the most customizable, right? Still though, you can't get wider than this. So these little channels here, they don't change, but you can add all these dividers that you want throughout. So there's, you know, a pretty good element of customization that you can add to these things. Uh, they are not rust proof. Uh, if your stuff is wet, this waterproof container will Still keep be the wet. water inside. <laughs> I, um, I use this for my, this, this has all of my ice fishing stuff in it. Yeah. My terminal tackle. Usually. So well. Yeah, I, I switch it out for the season when we go ice fishing. Uh, never a bad option. And they're super cheap. Yeah. So if for the most part, you just want to keep your stuff dry, as long as you dry it yourself before you put the lures away, you're in a good spot. Or if you throw like the silica gel packets or do your own homemade fix for rusting issues. If you need a durable good. box that doesn't cost very much, it is the 3700 yeah. Plano, that one, the stowaway, definitely a great option. That was like my full fleet before yeah. we upgraded to this next one. Yeah. So then we move to the Edge series. So now we actually take a gigantic jump in price. Mm -hmm. uh, so these start at like 25. Uh, I think the base boxes are 25 when you go for specialty, like right here. Yeah, right here we have a jig box. If you can find it on sale, awesome. Usually it starts at $29.99. Uh, so not cheap. However, here's what makes these awesome. You got one latch. Ta-da! <laughs> and it also opens all the freaking way. This thing's great. So if you're sitting in your boat and your kayak on the bank, Flip the whole thing open. And we were just talking about rust situation. Uh, look at this. We got a little uh, rust prevention packet right here, which slides right in on all the Plano Edge series. So you always have one of these in there, which will help keep everything dry inside. And you're not going to have that issue with rusting. So this is the jig box. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. Got all these little dividers in here. You can just slide the jig head in. But right you do there. not have to cut. So all yeah. of those come in a in a little box. And so you do not have to cut all those. They, yeah. they all come separated. So there's that one for Free you. Free 
cut. These are already set in. When you get the jig box, it's already set up. But yeah, you can just slide all your jigs in here. They stay in place. These things stay shut pretty well. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> get to it. That's my gripe. Yeah, there, there is one big gripe here. So here's like the regular. These are all 3,700 size, by the way, uh, just because it's way better. <laughs> I just use the big boxes. If you guys are in a boat, if you're in a kayak, if you've got the space to spare, Go 3,700, there's no point in doing 36. Yep. And I'll even put these in a backpack because you just get a bigger bag. They also had a boat angler in mind uh, when they were designing the box. You could tell that the yeah. way that these stack, so there's ridges up on top, that keeps everything separate, all the different compartments separate. It also makes these very, very stackable. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so like we showed you in these, the thumbnail, but yeah, like hold that up. All these stack together very nicely and they're not coming apart. Stay together. You've also got a little label right here, reusable label. So you can just put permanent marker on that, alcohol swab it off when you want to change the name. That's pretty sweet. Here's the main issue. Like this latch will sometimes either not latch, you think you got it, or it latches on like one side and it's not really shut. And then what happens? You put it into your boat or into your tackle box. It pops open sideways. And you know what that means. Yeah. Your tackle is in the bottom of your tackle bag now. That is it. That, <laughs> Rip. That, I, at, so that was that's always been my biggest gripe yeah. is because I think these just the plastic that they, they're using is not super super rigid. It's rigid yeah. enough. It's not super rigid. It's so, a really long latch, and too. it's long. So I mean, obviously, that's what makes this so challenging is getting mm. it down to like one latch. So yep. yeah, my biggest gripe and the problem I have, especially with the terminal tackle box. So they make a terminal specific box. Yeah, they make a terminal tackle this box. Terminal box is first of all on the surface phenomenal. Look at this thing. It's ridiculous. So check this out. Pop this open. You've got a couple open front trays, right? So put whatever you want into there. And then you've got these closed trays. Look at this. They have a lid on them, right? So I can keep some of the smaller stuff in place most of the time. And then I've got like bigger trays for hooks and different things back here. I got belly weighted hooks back here, for example. And then You've got these weight bins in the way back, right? It's got a little silicone sleeve here to keep those weights from banging around sometimes, but you can see it still kind of does. There's some dust right there because uh, it you. still moves. It's pretty cool though. So we got like three trays and then these are all customizable too. You can just pull them out and you can replace them, change them up. But if this one doesn't shut, this is my absolute nightmare. Yep. This is the one that actually falls open on me the most too. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like the it's like if you have kids or a dog and you like you can tell immediately when you shut the door behind you whether or not it latched because you're always listening for the yeah. door to be unlatched. This is the exact same thing. Like I'm always watching for these Very to come unlatched because I've gotten bit by that before. Yeah. They are durable. They work really well. I like these boxes for the value. Tough to beat. I mean, I know they're yeah. more expensive. But tough to be for the value. Not too much more, really. No, but it they're they're rock solid. But yeah. that one little gripe is kind of a biggie, and it's, it's a big issue. Not 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 all the way latching every time. That yeah. they'll get you. Yeah. So be careful with them. But for the price, very very difficult to beat on the market. They are pretty phenomenal. They're also super tall. Like look at the size of some of these baits that are yep. stacking up in here. Like, hold on. Yeah, me, there's some. Let me pull old... some of the big old hunking baits. Like that bait is fitting in no problem. Like that is a sizable bait right in Jeff's face. <laughs> but the nice thing about it is like it's it's pretty unbelievable how you can uh, stack like a bunch yeah. of crankbaits together and then uh, it's shocking what fits in there because they're actually pretty tall. Yeah, so they'll hold a lot of baits. Uh, again, big thing I didn't even show you guys this. These are the dividers and they come pre-divided and look at the little slots in there too. So that helps with the moisture wicking as well. So the other gripe that I have is you still end up with a ton of those dividers. So I have. Oh, I have. Hang on. I, I, was saying, I have a whole box. I have a whole one of these boxes, the big ones. I have whole rows and rows and rows of those. Do <laughs> yeah. And there it is. <laughs> these, these are for the flambeau. I'll show you that in a second. But these are all the Plano edge dividers. I have literally six million of them. Uh, <laughs> so it's like you still end up with like the same kind of like age old problem of like. Now I have 14, 15, 25, Waste. 35 of these sitting around extra just taking yeah. up space in my life. <laughs> it's absurd. All right, so from there, we move to uh, one of our favorites to use, Busby Fishing. Now, this is a smaller known brand. They've been growing 
in the past, I don't know, 18 three months years? since we've seen them. But yeah, last year and a half, yeah. huge. They've been around for like three plus years. We've had them on the Burly Fishing Podcast, so you can go back and check out that episode if Buzzby. you want to hear from Caleb at Busby. Uh, but they sell now like three different sizes. Mm -hmm. We have a whole bunch of options here, so check this out. Here's your smaller, it's called the Colony 15. Uh, we'll explain what that means here in a second, but it's like your 3700 size. Here's the Colony 28 which is a much bigger, like your 3,700 size. So the way these work, and this one's pretty empty, so this would be easier to show you on. Number one, super heavy duty latches on the front. This is pretty awesome right there. Super heavy duty latches, so we pop that thing open. We've got our waterproof seal right here. These are floating. So if you toss them in the water, they actually float. We've got a video of us did, doing that. Did test. Did test. Paul threw me his tackle box. It was pretty sweet. So you can see that video here. Um, I'll link it above. And then these little trays pop out. Look, it's like a little Lego board on the inside. But they use this honeycomb design, as you guys can see right there. And that is what makes it the colony. So Buzz B is like this honeycomb design. And you put your little Lego bricks in it. So there's a bunch of different sizes of these. We've got that, we've got like the, the one, one buys, yeah. which are great for terminal, quad section there for spinner baits, fantastic. And then we've got longer boxes and even longer than this one here. These are one by threes. The spinnerbait call one by fours. The spinnerbait call is huge. Like your standard you can size spinnerbait. So baits, many. I have eleven or twelve in mine right now, and yeah. I know I've got more in there. Like that is they just lay right so on clutch. top of each other. It's pretty great. So yeah, you can as you can see, customize this in any way, shape, or form you want, especially if you get the different size trays. So these go anywhere from a one by one up to a one by four, and then you've got the two by two right here. So a bunch of different sizes that you can get. So these are endlessly customizable, which is what makes them awesome. Chef, why do they call the Colony 15? <laughs> So this one has 15 spaces in it. We've been saying two by two, one by one. Basically each one of those is one square, is one unit of measure. This holds 15 squares. And the 28 holds 28 squares. This is one of my favorite boxes right here. This is actually a custom order one you can do. It's their terminal box. Here's where the first problem with Busby comes into play. This is a $50 box. So it ain't cheap. I mean, consider most terminal boxes are, I think the Plano Edge terminal is about 45 or 50 bucks as well. I think it is 45 for the terminal, yeah. So the Plano Edge terminal is almost equally as expensive. Uh, that's what you get when you get terminal. And then here's the Busby, check this out. Look at all those one buys. So this is my Ned Rig shaky head terminal box. So lots of jig stuff in here. So I've got two long rows all the way across of the one by ones, right? And then we've got the one by twos across the bottom so I can fit like the bigger jig head hooks and stuff in there, Tokyo rigs, all of that. So very versatile box. Also very heavy because well, all the weights are in it. And by heavy, you mean heavy duty. But it's not gonna dump out on me because I have these super heavy duty latches there. You guys see all the squares on the top? So you can actually keep everything inside of their individual containers. Are you kidding me? What an absolute legendary concept. Yeah, so these are these are holding everything in place so they're not gonna spill over compartments. So if that's something that bothers you, which it does me, then you don't have to worry about it. And Paul just called this one out. Check out this back hinge. This is absolutely ridiculous. Super heavy duty. These are extremely robust, overly robust. Yeah. Uh, they are beefy. They are second problem here very big so they are gigantic these take up more space than your normal plano tackle boxes so that is something to keep in mind they are a bit oversized but they are also designed for a bone owner so they stack up just like the planos do they have a um both the lid and the bottom portion um, have a hole in it so that you can actually string, like if you're leaving your boat in somewhere overnight um, or you have these in your car somewhere, you can actually lock all of these together through this cable, um, little spot for your cable. So actually That's kind sweet. of kind of sweet and it is rock solid. I mean, yep. compared to the Plano Edge, which is very durable and a very solid box, these are just, they're they're overbuilt, Heavier they're duties. rock solid, they're <laughs> super heavy duty. I don't really like know of any, rock. Yeah, I don't know of anything else that's overbuilt in the same way, like these things are rock solid. Yep. So moving on to another brand, we've got Flimbo. Flimbo? Flimbo. Flimbo. <laughs> got Flimbo Outdoors and they make a, a ton of different boxes. So first I think I'll just talk about these. So they're like main two types of boxes that come in many different variations here. 
are these, the Z-Rust series, right? The Z-Rust is legit. I've had their smaller boxes I've used for ice fishing and stuff. They're pretty good, um, but these are the Z-Rust. So here's like your regular Z-Rust. Here's your Z-Rust Max. It's gonna be that darker gray color. These are not expensive. So first of all, if you want just a regular Z-Rust, you're paying like 12 to 14 bucks, which is not bad. We're going back to those like two basic latches you saw in the first couple planos we looked at, right? Pretty simple setup, very customizable. We've got two skinny rows up here, one big row down here in which you can put a whole bunch of these blue dividers. Kind of weak hinges in the back though. So you can see the hinges though on the back. These are a little bit, you know, it's, it's an inexpensive box. That's what you're gonna get. It's not heavy duty, uh, but it will keep your tackle from rusting, which is valuable. And keep it in a box. And keep it in a box. <laughs> if you wanna step that up a little bit, you go to the Max Z-Rust. These have those big old hinges on here, uh, similar to those Plano stowaway boxes. I will call out that they are not as strong as the Plano stowaway boxes. I have broken these hinges more times than I can count on flambeaux versus, I don't think I've ever broken one on the Plano box, so. Never had a dream of doing that. <laughs> just something to say, I don't know, just from opening it a bunch. It was more on the uh, the smaller size, yeah. and those were also like this this style. So it could have been that, it could have been that, it could have been user error. <laughs> yeah, right, like that's possible. Uh, anyway, so these are water sealed, right? So we're getting back to that water sealed sew away uh, versus this, this is not water sealed. This one was $18.99 and this is the deep box. Check that out. So you don't have to go deep. If you go for the regular size box, it's gonna be a little bit less expensive. And here you get to lay the long trays in too. So you can go with like one, two, all three of them if you want. The only issue with that is if you do all three, you end up with these super skinny sections. Super skinny. All that really fits in there for me is like, maybe if you're throwing like some dark sleepers or something. I got a bunch of the Amazon ones in here too. They're fine, they'll fit in there. Maybe just a soft swim bait, something like that. But then you can store the bigger baits up here and you can lay these across. So I will say a little bit less sturdy yeah. because these are all inserts. Like the whole inside of this is an insert or you can leave it one big open box if you want to. But it does have like the recessed top right? That's coming out a little bit. So it's going to keep them from moving around compartment to compartment, which is a plus. Um, so we got three latches on this bad boy. It's watertight. So built into their plastic is this like rust prevention compound, which is great. So if I'm using expensive swim baits, like I don't want to have all my big giant treble hooks all rusty. So this does keep them safe. And for the cost, it's a pretty gosh dang good deal, I would say. Like well, I mean, the deep box, right? Like Busby makes yeah. the deep box. It's a lot more expensive than this guy. So if yep. you're just looking for something to hold, you know, 10 or 15 baits, I've seen a lot of guys, yeah. you know, gluing foam to the bottom to protect some of those baits and do some other things. But like the yep. baseline price, way less than, you know, going way up to the top of your budget. So. Yeah. So like we're just getting into glide baits, swim baits, bigger baits, things like that. Uh, so I figured, you know, for now, I'm going to start with that. And that's usually what I recommend to people is like when you're getting into something, start low, build up high. This is, I don't know, that's how I roll. Don't be silly. So yeah, and then you can upgrade like the Busby deep box is probably the next one I would get. And then Plano Edge also has a deep box. So there's different price points you can hit with those as well. Um, here's something else that I think is just really cool. And other brands make this as well, but this is obviously the inexpensive option. Uh, so this is the Ike approved Flambeau Big Mouth box. This is something where you can store your spoons, in this case, spinner baits, chatter baits, anything that you wanna just hang up, you can put in here. It's got the Z-Rust compound in there as well, so it's gonna prevent them from getting rusty. And the hooks are not laying down in water if you, perchance, got water in here. They're off the bottom. So I thought that was really cool. So this is a nice little custom box that you can get from Flambeau. And then it works really well if you space it out this way for spinner baits, for example. And these are 10 bucks. Boy, 10 bucks. Does it, boy, does it jingle. <laughs> Great for parties. One thing we didn't call out because we don't have these specific boxes is that there are some like crankbait specific boxes out there. They'll look kind of funky. They got like a bunch of silicone pieces sticking up out of them and you just shove your crankbaits down in there. And the idea is that the hooks don't get intertwined and you guys know how that feels. 
a little knot there, Russ. <laughs> you can work on that one. Yeah. You try to like shake out your baits to get the treble hooks off. It's annoying. I totally get it. Um, I would say the Plano Edge one might be worth it. But then you see something like this one right here. So this is a groove fishing. Um, I don't know if they make a big one. I think that the concept of this box is awesome. And I think that maybe the execution wasn't great. So I picked this one up a while ago. It's not one that I use anymore at all, and I'll show you why. Uh, these little silicone pieces, they do keep your treble hooks from intertwining with each other, but they also just slide right out. So I got kind of annoyed with the fact that they just come out so easily. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. You pull your bait out and you're just like throwing five of these around pretty much. So it's like a different, you're trading for a different problem. Um, also, it only has one magnetic hinge, which although they've demonstrated it on like videos, I've seen them chuck these off a roof, by the way. So I think that the plastic itself is pretty heavy duty. It's got a decent little hinge on the back. That's pretty heavy duty. This magnet doesn't stay shut. So the issue I had is if I actually filled this up with say 15 to 20 and it only holds small to medium sized crankbaits. I don't know if they make a big boy one. Um, if I filled it up, a lot of those baits would push this lid open on me and it would just stay open like the whole time. Magnet, magnet, magnet. And they just don't, for whatever reason, stay shut very well. I don't know what it is. I wanted to love it. I wanted to love it. I think it's a great concept and I think it could maybe be upgraded, improved over time. Uh, but Plano Edge makes one where you actually latch it and I would prefer that for sure. I the problem I have with uh, crankbait specific boxes like that in general, like no one likes untangling lures. It's, it's, yeah, it's a pain. silly and you feel like a dork every time you do it. <laughs> the flip side though is how many more crankbaits can you fit when you match like tail to tail yeah. and you go all the way through. I mean, uh, you can fit like tw two times as many crankbaits into like a standard 3,700 so size box. More. Um, you just gotta do this. You're just gonna have to, yeah, you get, that's, yeah. I mean, and that's, it's a trade off though. So, like, if yeah. you're in a boat and you got tons of storage space and that's yeah. something that bothers you and you are, you know, really cool with looking at just rows and rows of beauty, then, you know, do it that way. If you just need to jam everything into a box, like we fish out of kayaks. That's so, I'm not taking roll. 25 of these boxes. I have yeah. like one crankbait box with me. I get that a lot more crankbaits in a smaller space. So, it's, yeah. it's a trade off. It's definitely a trade off. I think, again, cool idea. Yeah. execution be better. Uh, the, the Plano one's pretty sweet. I would rather have a latch option to it personally. I think that would be better. Uh, and then there's other brands out there. We've been contacted by brands before. They're like, hey, you want to test this box out? And I've just said, honestly, no. Like, because I wouldn't fish with it. I don't want to be like, yes. And then be like, this is great because I don't personally use them that way. Yeah. So there was one that approached us. I don't even remember the name, but they had custom molded okay. the exact shape of very specific baits, which is probably if you're a bass tournament angler and you're like, yeah, I'm going to use my DTs, right? So if I'm throwing Rapala DTs and they're all the same size in this one box and they're probably all the same color, yeah. you know, or slight color variations. Cool. Great concept. I do not do that. I have like one, two max of any bait that is the exact same. I do not have many duplicates in these boxes that I can think of. Styles, maybe a couple different colors. Styles, yes. But even then, like the max would be like three or four. Exactly. The max, yeah. So I personally agree. for us, kayak fishing, probably you bank anglers, you feel the same way. It's just not very good. And then it's, it's an entire box taking up yeah. space in your boat or your backpack or your wherever, your kayak. Uh, of exactly the same kind of bait. Whereas I would rather take well, the, yeah, the one of these. This is why the Busby is great. So, you know, I have I have like here. long trays that are filled with uh, crankbaits, right? Like square bills. This is the day box, yeah. right? You got square bills. You got some crankbaits in here. You got a little wiggle wart there from Mr. Bass. We've got some topwater, a little whopper plopper down here. We got jigs, swim jigs, chatter baits. Spinner baits, a buzz bait. I got topwater poppers. I got a chatter bait square bill right there. And then I got a custom jig here from, uh, I think Midwest Warriors and all sorts of other cool stuff. So, I mean, I can literally take everything I need in one box. But the nice thing about the trays though, like I'll keep long trays for those crank baits and especially yep. for jerk baits. Jerk baits. So we just kind of transitioned to Michigan sort of starting to get away from jerk baits and, and starting to get closer into like square bill territory. Yep. So all I got to do is take one of those really long trays pull it out of my day box and then swap Switch. it out, right? <laughs> if I've got those those four square trays, the uh, one yep. by fours, um, 
that I keep spinner baits in, I'll have one for darks, one for lights, one for silver, one for copper. And like, if yeah. you know what kind of water you think you're gonna be fishing that day, it's as simple as boom, 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 swapping out for your day box. So I keep, like Jeff, I keep one that I literally am just constantly trading trays out of. Day box. Just makes life so much easier. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like Jeff said, there's probably a, a good customer out there for that, you know, for that company and that style oh, of box. Oh, for sure there is. But the level of flexibility, so like if you wanna make the most for your 50 bucks, um, getting a Busby, you're getting a lot of flexibility. You're getting a lot out of one box. So this is not a video to rag on any one brand. Again, these are just our preferences, our opinions, and maybe you guys have different ones. And that's why we asked in the beginning of the video, like, let us know your opinions. Maybe you don't like Busby. Maybe you don't like Plano. Maybe you like a different brand we're not even mentioning. Feel free to drop it in the comments. It helps everybody in the community. Uh, so this is just our personal experience with the Bass Mafia. Terminal box specifically, but they do make a lot of these like coffin style, super heavy duty plastic setups, which are heavy duty, are borderline indestructible. Like I could run this over with a truck, it'd be fine. Uh, they teamed up with the Guggens. They got some Guggen branded ones. Uh, I think they look good. I think uh, the plastic ones, their standard plastic ones are gonna be more similar to like this flambeau with the two latches there, but they also have two side latches. So it's a little more secure, but this is the terminal coffin. It says right there, you can see, it's the terminal coffin. So the problem I have with this one is it doesn't have the side latches and this is not enough. Like these latches are, they're gonna live forever because they're heavy duty built into the thing, but they just don't stay shut. Case in point, Paul and I were at a buddy's house and we're filming one of our videos kind of like this at his house and I walk in with this thing and I was holding too many boxes, and this doesn't stack on anything, by the way. It's very oddly shaped. It's self. I think it stacks very on different. itself, but that's it. It would stack if I had like five terminal coffins, right? So I drop this. It hits the ground on one corner, and the whole thing does this and dumps all of my terminal tackle everywhere. And my terminal tackle, he means hooks. And so it's just hooks like there are everywhere. like three kids in the house. My friend has three kids. <laughs> and I was like, everybody stand back. And I think the thing too about a terminal, you want to see an extra heavy duty latch with a terminal mm -hmm. box, specifically because For there's sure. a heck of a lot more weight in a terminal box than there is in like a crankbait box, right? Yeah, so this thing weighs six pounds, you know? So check it out. On the inside, they do have this really cool setup. I prefer, I wish yes. Plano could do this. 100%. This is amazing. Right, so this right here is what I wish I could have in a Plano Edge or in a Busby. It's a little foam insert. It's got this sliding panel. Look at that, are you kidding me? So the panel slides off in either direction to keep all your weights in here. That is what they crushed out of the park. Phenomenal, amazing. And also this, the slotted foam there for your hooks, mm -hmm. uh, underspins, you know, weighted belly hooks, like all that stuff, fantastic. So these six compartments, I think, Amazing. I think the surrounding enclosure, not my favorite. I don't like that it doesn't open up all the way either. Yeah, and it only opens this far, which is kind of annoying. So maybe that's someone's preference, not mine. Uh, in the kayak, I would prefer that opens all the way so I don't just keep like dropping well, it on myself. Here's, but here's the reason I don't like it. So it's so easy to accidentally bump when it's up and then yep. your whole terminal box is like tipped over. So that's and I've done thing. that. And I've done that. And that's that's yeah. my big gripe. The other thing too is it makes it a lot easier to break. So if something yep. falls on this one, it's open. You could potentially break it. So I do like one that opens up past, past halfway. So it should go past yep. like the 180. Like I want like 180. Five. Not gonna fall shut on my face. Yeah. So again, pros, these are phenomenal. Price-wise, it is right in line with the Plano Edges and the Busby for sure, but if given the choice, mm -hmm. there's no way I go with this. Uh, also the front compartments, <laughs> see the problem Weird, that just that? <laughs> I just talked about this. The front compartments are very small and for whatever reason, like these things don't line up very well. So like this one's not even touching. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Yeah. Like this one's not even touching the edge. It's barely in there. So that's a little bit annoying. Uh, it just seems molded kind of funky. And the stuff that I was putting in here was spilling over into the other compartments every single time. Uh, and in a kayak, like we don't have a choice. We don't store these in a kayak sitting like this. Yeah. They go into a back crate like that, or they go into a front pocket like this. So chances of this spilling out are 100%. It's gonna spill, which is really annoying. So, I mean, again, another great idea mm. and some, some innovations that are amazing, like those little compartments. I wish I could see in other brands. Execution, not my favorite. So You're a couple tweaks away from being kind of in It could that be perfect. Being worth the 50 bucks. Yeah, for yeah. sure. 
So another option on the market. But speaking of other options on the market that we don't have on us, there's also Lure Lock. I have had experience with it though, so I'll share my experience. Lure Lock, inexpensive. These are the guys that talk about the uh, sticky mat on the bottom, right? So we just talked about our hooks getting all tangled up. You've got like the Plano coffins, you've got the groove fishing we showed you, different solutions that exist out there. Lure Lock is one of those. So it's got this actual like sticky mat on the bottom, it's blue, you've seen them, or maybe some of you guys use them, and it'll just stick your bait right in there. Now I've tested this, I flipped it over, depending on the bait, they don't all hold, right? It's kind of like one of those infomercial situations where you're like, look, it works 100% of the time. It doesn't, it works most of the time. Sometimes, I mean, granted, you're not just doing this with your tackle exactly. box. Yeah. Uh, but they don't they don't stick forever, right? So in a kayak, the problem I see is once again, it's like this. Mm -hmm. They're gonna move around. If it's like this, they're gonna move around. They're gonna move around less. They're not gonna move around as much, but they're gonna move around. They would move around much less if they were in their own compartment, right? Just saying. Uh, but yeah, I would say it was a decent box. It had decent latches. Mm -hmm. Latches were good. Latches were high quality. For the price, it's pretty solid. So it's kind of like if you're looking for your first option out there, I can't see why you wouldn't do lure lock, especially if you're going to fish a lot of treble baits. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are, I mean, if you're bank fishing with just like jigs and stuff, I would get a terminal box. If you're, you know, fishing on a river or a body of water, like from a kayak, maybe where you have a lot of treble baits, it could be a good option. If you're a crankbait square bow guy, it's a good option, yeah. especially because it's inexpensive. If you are, yeah. a, if you just need another stack to hold baits that you maybe don't grab every day. Oh, they come in really they cool They come stacks. in a, a nice stack with a yeah. little, like, a little case on the outside. Yeah. Um, and, and they stack up really nicely so they'd fit like in a corner of your boat. Again, yep. if you just need something to keep yourself organized and you don't, you know, it doesn't need to be bulletproof. Like mm -hmm. if this is one out of 25 boxes that you have, yep. you can get 25 boxes for the same price as like three of these. So that's kind Fact. of, you know, that's, that's sort of, again, you're getting a trade off. Like mm -hmm. these are great boxes. I only carry a couple of these in my boat, so I don't need as many as Jeff has right here. I have I, too many. I have a couple, right? And then, <laughs> but if I needed like 15 boxes and I'm just yeah. getting started, or maybe I just bought a boat, now I don't want to spend a bunch of money on other yep. stuff. It's a great way to get a box that's going to hold your baits. Again, to Jeff's point, if you got a bunch of trebles floating around, it's probably not a bad idea. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's also yeah. potentially a little bit quieter than sure. just having a bunch of baits in plastic. So if you're in like a tin boat, like a deep V, and you need to be quiet, maybe you know you're, you're going around little gill ponds and stuff. It could be. It could be. It could be a great option for you. Not quiet. I'm sorry. <laughs> not quiet. I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. That's another one out there that you see a lot. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just not like my preference. So I don't run them either. So. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we went through our experience with them. We showed you all the ones that we've used or experienced. We talked about ones that we don't have anymore, like Lure Lock, uh, Bass Mafia, things that are out there that you guys can check out. So if you're on the market for tackle boxes, hopefully that was helpful. Okay. So if we were to rank these as far as like our personal preferences, top five players, right? Uh, I would say, and it's actually way more than five of them, but mm -hmm. let's go kind of brand wise what we walked through today. I would say number one for me was, you want to go one for one? Sure. So my number one would be Busby just because it's the most easily customizable. Does have some drawbacks. Don't get me wrong, but I feel for the space that I have in my kayak, Perfect, and I use them bank angling all the time. I just use kind of a bigger bag, but it's because I can take one of the 3,700 sizes and my Plano terminal box, and like I'm good for the day. Good for the day. So I'd say Busby's my number one. What's your number one? I'll go devil's advocate. I will say if I could only have one box, mm -hmm. it would be the Busby because of how flexible it is. It can act like 10 boxes. So True. I will say that's probably, but I'm gonna go Plano Edge. Uh, you can get these on sale, maybe not like post COVID just because of all yeah. of the prices right now are really high because stock is limited. So, mm -hmm. but even at 30 bucks, it's a great value. It's a deep box. It's super flexible. It's absolutely gonna get the job done. I do, even though there is like a little risk of them potentially popping open on you, I really love the one bar it's a nice benefit um they're and lighter then, too they are lighter they're they're a lot lighter so i you know again if you're look, like i could get two of these for um, one potentially for one busby and then i also really like the edge terminal box i that yep. is my preference because i i carry one and i just like jeff take it bank angling i take it angling every day it's that terminal box and it's the busby skinny. 
It's lighter. The yeah. Colony 28 and the and the uh, Plano Terminal are the two boxes that I take with me every single time I go fishing, mm -hmm. period. So, but I will go, I'm gonna go 3,700 uh, Plano Edge. It's really close for me too, because I, like I just mentioned, when I go bank angling, I take the Plano Terminal. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely my preference for terminal boxes that are out there. So my number two is a Plano Edge <laughs> series because they're phenomenal, like they're great. Other than the rare occasion where the latch comes undone, which does happen, has unfortunately happened to me a mm -hmm. few times and dumped out into my tackle bag, whatever. Uh, most of the time it doesn't. I'm a little more careful about it now, I would say. Yeah. But yeah, you can't go wrong with the Plano Edge. Considering that the Busby's base price is $39.99, and that's with just the base set of bins that you get if you want to buy extra bins or extra money. If you want to get the deep box, it's more money. If you want to get the terminal-specific box, it's more money, so it's like 40 to 50, 55 bucks that you're spending there. You can't be the terminal, or, or you can't be any of the Plano edges really, plus they're usually on sale. So that's easily my number two. Yep, uh, more widely available too. So you can like use a discount code, Every coupon, store. that yeah. sort of thing. Cabela's um, points, yeah. Bass Pro points. Dude, I do it, yeah. all, I do it yeah. all the time. But the, uh, the Busby's my number two for the exact reasons that Jeff talked about. Super unbelievably heavy duty, super flexible. Again, if I can mm. only have one, it's the Busby. Yeah, absolutely. I would say number three, for all you guys out there, of all the things we talked about today, is probably lure lock. Yeah. Like I would say lure lock because it covers the basis of preventing rust, keeping your stuff from moving around too much, variety of different boxes, comes in its own carrying case if you want. Uh, you don't need a backpack, you kind of just carry that tote that they yeah. give you. But for the most part, even if stored sideways, they're not, you know, your baits aren't moving around that much. So you're less likely to have all those trebles get intertwined uh, with like your jerk baits and your crank baits and all that. So I think value wise, for you guys out there, if you're pond fishing, bank fishing, all that, that's probably the next one I would say. Uh, and if I were choosing it, I think it's pretty solid. I'd probably go with that, even over all the other brands that I've used in the past. So it's probably my number three. I'm going... Because these are the only ones I use. This is Plano Edge that's and Buzzbee. True. So I'm literally calling out the one I don't use, but I think could be great for just about anybody. I'll call out the one that I actually still use and I use all the time. That's Stowaway. So that Plano Stowaway, whether the it's the 3700 or the 3500, I use both of them, not just for ice, ice yep. fishing, but that 3500 is a phenomenal jig Still box. In your you boat. will be stunned how many jigs you can fit in there. Yeah. Um, it's just a great box, and, yep. and it's because it's heavy duty and yep. it's waterproof. I do not need to worry about that, anything at all yep. about that box. It does. It looks brand new, and I've had it for years. So for the price, I, I honestly think of everything out here, and mm -hmm. I mean including the Plano, I mm -hmm. think in terms of like dollar for value, mm -hmm. You can get those for sub $10. I, yeah. There's certain sites where you can be like Carl's Bait and Tackle. Like you can do it at a superb. That's where I bought most of mine. Super. I think I've got like the 3600 sizes for seven ninety nine. It's really not. It's not fair. I mean, they're just really good boxes. They're that's waterproof. my next one. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. It's they're just and that, and then I think we would flip flop because my next one would be Lure Lock right yep. after that. So I think yep. you're right. You're you're kind of right on the line. It depends on what you're looking for. Like so, Stowaway Lure Locks for us, kind of those next two mm -hmm. we would say. Uh, so great option starting out. Very inexpensive. Great for bank angling, pond hopping, all that. And uh, then it's just, do you want the waterproof one? or the one that keeps your treble hooks from getting intertwined, right? So two great options there, kind of pick based on your preference. From there, power rankings for us for the rest of the day would be Flambo. Max Z Rust right there, uh, especially with me getting into swim baits. I think this is gonna be awesome, uh, but these are great. Again, only downside I've had to these is these latches will break sometimes. I'm gonna get some of those and I'm gonna try and get some like, decent foam and I'm mm -hmm. gonna line the bottom of mine and see how it works. I've seen some other people do it uh, for like a really cheap kind of like upgrade of an inexpensive box. Yeah. And you're, again, you're like getting a lot for like not a lot of money. Yeah, pretty good call out. I'll mm -hmm. probably do the same. Uh, so I think that's a good option. Bass Mafia boxes. Pretty solid, so that'd be like the next option below that, I would say. Uh, the only issue mainly is if it's the two latch system, like on the coffins, not great. Like there are four latch regular boxes that they have Bass Mafia or the Guggen Squad ones. Those are decent as well, and I think price-wise, not that bad. So, it's solid box. if you're on the market, you can mm -hmm. look at those. These are different for me. I'm not even gonna rank these. No. If you have spinner baits or you fish a lot of spoons, you should get something like well, this. Well, Plano makes one of these too. Um, they do, so they're and it's the same latch. But they're more expensive. Way more. I would, I mean, as much as I love this style box, I'm probably going with the Flambeau. Yeah. yeah, for 10 bucks, you can't beat that as a no. spinner box. That. Bottom. <laughs> No offense to them, great idea, great it concept. Is, it is, it great really concept. is. I'm not, 
I need to harp on that. Great concept. Yeah. Maybe they'll upgrade it soon. I don't know. Just wasn't a huge fan. If that one had a latch, we might be having a yeah. different conversation. They actually make two. So I did want to call this out, though, as a pro for Groove. Um, they do make these. These are called the launch pad. They come in two different options. You got your jig option or just open hook option right there. And then you got like your body baits, crank baits option right here. These have this little sticky material that you can replace, double-sided tape, whatever you wanna do. And you just stick that or even screw this into your boat. Like this one has actually got screw holes right there. So you could do that. Uh, that I thought was cool. So I like this better than the boxes that they offer personally. Um, so if you guys are looking for something as far as just keeping baits organized in your boats, you could throw these up on and, the inside of your boat. And by boat, I mean it. kayak. I actually yeah, put, kayaks. I put in like Velcro into mine for yep. like almost the exact same purpose, like foam Vel Velcroed in, and like it's I would, solid. If those had existed back when I was doing that, I would have done. This, I would have gone yeah. with that. It's a really good idea. Uh, Jeff, how many times has someone made a comment to you on Instagram <laughs> or uh, on YouTube saying? The only thing by your feet in your kayaks is open trebles, <laughs> like with fish haven't, flopping around. Haven't stepped on one yet. Haven't stepped on one yet. Tune in next week for that one. <laughs> yeah, next week we'll be removing hooks from my feet. All right, you guys, so hey, I feel like that was maybe a, a nice little upgrade to the older videos that we've made as far as tackle box buyer's guide. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you guys are on the market, I mean, open fish season now, everybody's getting back out there. You're trying to check stock at your local fishing stores and stock up on tackle. You gotta have somewhere to put that tackle. You put it in the tackle box. So maybe this was helpful for you if you're on the market shopping for those right now. If it was, let us know. Smash the like on this video, drop a comment below. You can ring that notification bell so you can see when we drop more videos. And of course, get subscribed to the channel if you're not. We do reviews, we do unboxings, we go fishing all the time on the channel and we'd love to see you here more often. We also go live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern so you can come join me and this guy as we talk to some of the best people in the fishing industry and it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's, it could be described as tons of fun. Tons <laughs> of fun. Couple hours just hanging out with us, having a good time. We'd love to see you there, talk to you in chat. And we do a giveaway every week too, so you got a chance of winning something as well. All right guys, thanks for watching the video today. We'll see you out on the water.